The Khmer Empire, a medieval powerhouse that once dominated the landscape of Southeast Asia, remains an enigmatic chapter in history, boasting architectural marvels, a rich cultural tapestry, and a complex socio-political structure. This essay delves into the realms of the Khmer Empire, exploring its origins, rise to power, cultural zenith, and eventual decline. By understanding the intricacies of this empire, we unlock not only the key to Southeast Asian history but also a deeper comprehension of the region's cultural heritage. This cinematic journey will not only serve as a historical exploration but also as a celebration of human achievement. By showcasing the architectural wonders, cultural nuances, and societal intricacies of the Khmer Empire, the documentary aims to foster a greater understanding and appreciation for this remarkable civilization. In doing so, it aspires to inspire curiosity, ignite scholarly interest, and contribute to the collective appreciation of Southeast Asia's rich historical heritage. The Khmer Empire's genesis was intimately connected with the region's geography and environment. Nestled in the heart of Southeast Asia, the Khmer homeland boasted a diverse landscape of lush plains, dense forests, and the mighty Mekong River. These geographic features not only provided fertile grounds for agriculture but also facilitated trade and communication. The intricate network of rivers and reservoirs, exemplified by the elaborate Angkor irrigation system, played a pivotal role in the empire's agricultural prosperity. The ability to harness and control water resources allowed the Khmer people to cultivate rice on a grand scale, sustaining a burgeoning population and laying the foundation for a sophisticated civilization. As the Khmer people adapted to their environment, early societal structures began to take shape. Archaeological evidence suggests that the region witnessed the emergence of organized communities as early as the 3rd century. Initially, these communities were likely small, with agrarian practices at their core. The early Khmer society, influenced by Indian cultural elements, began to evolve with the introduction of Hinduism. This cultural and religious infusion catalyzed the formation of a hierarchical social structure, with priests and elites occupying prominent positions. The integration of Indian scripts and languages also marked the beginning of a distinctive Khmer identity. The transition from loose-knit communities to a centralized state marked a significant phase in Khmer history. The 9th-century monarch Jayawarman II is often credited as the architect of this transformation. He declared himself the universal monarch a move that signified the establishment of a sovereign Khmer state. Jayalwarman II's reign marked the consolidation of power and the unification of various Khmer territories. The ceremonial act of Devaraja, the god-king concept, solidified the ruler's divine authority and reflected the fusion of Hindu religious beliefs with political governance. This marked the beginning of a lineage of Khmer kings who would continue to shape the destiny of the empire. The founding of the Khmer Empire can be traced back to the early 9th century, marked by the visionary leadership of King Jayawarman II. This period witnessed the consolidation of disparate Khmer territories into a unified political entity. Jayawarman II's ascension to the throne was a pivotal moment, as he sought to establish the Khmer state as a distinct and sovereign entity. The ceremonial act of Devaraja where Jayawarman II declared himself the god-king, symbolized the divine authority of the monarch and the establishment of the Khmer Empire. This event marked a departure from earlier decentralized governance structures, laying the foundation for a centralized and powerful state. Jayawarman II's reign was characterized by strategic military campaigns and diplomatic maneuvers that aimed at unifying the Khmer territories under a single rule. His vision for a consolidated empire was realized through a combination of military prowess and strategic alliances. The success of his efforts laid the groundwork for the subsequent expansion and cultural flourishing that defined the Khmer Empire's golden age. The capital city of Hariharalaya, established by Jayawarman II, served as an early center of power and administration. This strategic location allowed for effective governance and served as a nucleus for the burgeoning empire. As Jayawarman II's successors continued to build upon his achievements, 
the Khmer Empire expanded its influence both militarily and culturally. Religion played a central role in shaping the identity and governance of the Khmer Empire. Hinduism, imported from India, was the dominant religious force during the early stages of the empire. The Khmer rulers, including Jayawarman II, adopted the God-King concept, associating themselves with Hindu deities and reinforcing their divine right to rule. Hinduism provided a unifying cultural and religious framework for the Khmer people, contributing to the formation of a shared identity. The construction of grand temples, such as Preya Ko and Bakong, served both religious and political purposes, symbolizing the close connection between the ruler and the divine. As the empire evolved, Buddhism also gained prominence alongside Hinduism. Subsequent rulers, including Jayawarman VII, embraced Buddhism, leading to a unique syncretism where both religions coexisted. This religious diversity contributed to the empire's cultural richness and tolerance, fostering an environment where artistic, architectural, and intellectual pursuits flourished. Arguably the most iconic symbol of the Khmer Empire, Angkor Wat stands as a testament to the architectural prowess and cultural grandeur of the empire. Built during the reign of Suryavarman II in the early 12th century, Angkor Wat is the largest religious monument in the world. Its construction reflects the culmination of the Khmer Empire's artistic and engineering achievements. Angkor Wat was conceived as a temple dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu, embodying cosmic symbolism in its design. The central tower represents Mount Meru, the mythical abode of the gods, surrounded by a vast moat symbolizing the cosmic ocean. The intricate bas reliefs, depicting scenes from Hindu epics like the Ramayana and Mahabharata, narrate the religious and mythological narratives that shaped Khmer society. The temple's significance extended beyond its religious function. It served as a symbolic representation of the Khmer Empire's power and divine legitimacy. The grandeur of Angkor Wat, with its intricate carvings and towering spires, showcased the empire's cultural sophistication and technological capabilities. While Angkor Wat is the most renowned, the Khmer Empire boasts a plethora of other architectural marvels scattered throughout its vast territory. The city of Angkor Thom, founded by Jayawarman VII, featured the iconic Bayan temple with its massive stone faces, each bearing a serene expression. The intricate carvings and the city's layout reflected the empire's urban planning expertise. The sprawling temple complex of Ta Prom, enveloped by the embrace of massive tree roots, provides a glimpse into the harmonious integration of nature and architecture during the Khmer Empire. The temples of Bante Sre, known for their pink sandstone carvings, exemplify the meticulous craftsmanship that defined Khmer art. The city of Angkor itself was a marvel of urban planning, with intricate irrigation systems, reservoirs, and causeways connecting the various temples and structures. The architectural achievements of the Khmer Empire not only served religious and cultural purposes but also showcased the empire's engineering ingenuity and organizational prowess. The construction of grand temples and cities was not only a testament to the empire's cultural sophistication but also indicative of its economic prosperity. The Khmer Empire's agricultural prowess, facilitated by advanced irrigation systems such as the West Beret, allowed for surplus food production, sustaining a large population. Economic prosperity was further fueled by the empire's strategic location along key trade routes. The Khmer Empire acted as a vibrant hub for regional and international trade, fostering economic exchanges with neighboring states like Champa, Srivijaya, and the southern Indian kingdoms. The empire's control over trade routes contributed to its wealth, enabling the construction of monumental structures and the patronage of the arts. The Khmer Empire's economic success was intricately linked with its cultural achievements, creating a symbiotic relationship between economic prosperity, cultural flourishing, and the empire's enduring legacy. This interconnectedness characterized the heart of the Khmer Empire, where economic prowess and cultural brilliance converged in the majestic landscapes of Angkor and its surrounding cities. The social fabric of the Khmer Empire was intricately woven, reflecting a hierarchical structure that played a crucial role in shaping the daily lives of its inhabitants. 
At the pinnacle of this hierarchy was the king, often regarded as the god king, embodying both political and religious authority. The king's authority was supported by a complex bureaucracy and military apparatus. Beneath the king, society was stratified into different classes. The Brahmin priests held a prominent position, serving as intermediaries between the divine and the earthly realms. The aristocracy, comprised of nobles and high-ranking officials, wielded considerable influence. Merchants, farmers, and laborers constituted the lower strata, contributing to the economic prosperity of the empire. The social hierarchy was further defined by a code of conduct and etiquette, emphasizing respect for elders and the importance of familial ties. The intricate dance of social roles and responsibilities shaped the cohesive and structured nature of Khmer society. The Khmer people developed a sophisticated linguistic and written tradition that played a vital role in the empire's cultural identity. The Khmer script, derived from ancient Indian scripts, was used for inscriptions on temples, royal edicts, and religious texts. This script, known as Khmer script or Khmer alphabet, remains in use today. Education in the Khmer Empire was primarily the domain of religious institutions. Buddhist monasteries and Hindu temples served as centers of learning, where young individuals, particularly those from the elite classes, received education in literature, philosophy, and religious doctrines. The emphasis on education was integral to the transmission of cultural values and religious teachings. The Khmer Empire's artistic and literary achievements stand as a testament to the flourishing cultural milieu of the time. In the realm of arts, the empire's architects and sculptors crafted intricate masterpieces that adorned temples and cities. Bas-reliefs depicted mythological narratives, royal processions, and scenes from everyday life, providing a rich tapestry of visual storytelling. Literature in the Khmer Empire flourished in both religious and secular contexts. Religious texts, often composed in Sanskrit, documented the teachings of Hinduism and Buddhism. Secular literature, including poetry and historical chronicles, was also prevalent. Notable examples include the Rimkar, the Khmer version of the Ramayana, and the inscriptions that chronicled the achievements of Khmer kings. The performing arts, including dance and theater, played a significant role in Khmer culture. The Aspara dance, characterized by intricate hand movements and elaborate costumes, exemplified the artistic sophistication of the Khmer people. These artistic expressions not only entertained but also served religious and cultural purposes, becoming an integral part of Khmer identity. Hinduism played a central role in shaping the religious landscape of the Khmer Empire during its early years. The empire's adoption of Hinduism was influenced by cultural exchanges with Indian traders and the migration of Brahmin priests. The Khmer rulers, especially during the reign of Jayawarman II, embraced the god-king concept, aligning themselves with Hindu deities. Hindu temples, such as the iconic Angkor Wat, were dedicated to Hindu gods like Vishnu and Shiva. The intricate bas-reliefs adorning these temples depicted scenes from Hindu epics, illustrating the empire's commitment to preserving and celebrating Hindu mythology. The symbolic architecture of the temples, with their towering spires and intricate carvings, reflected the cosmological concepts of Hinduism. Hindu rituals, including elaborate ceremonies conducted by Brahmin priests, were an integral part of Khmer society. The alignment of the empire's political and religious structures with Hindu principles contributed to a cohesive cultural identity and a sense of divine legitimacy in governance. While Hinduism played a predominant role in the early stages of the Khmer Empire, the integration of Buddhism became more pronounced in later periods. This religious transition reached its zenith during the reign of Jayawarman VII in the 12th century. Jayawarman VII embraced Buddhism, notably the Mahayana tradition, and declared it as the state religion. The Bayan Temple in Angkor Thom, built under Jayawarman VII, prominently features images of the Buddha alongside traditional Hindu deities. This syncretic approach reflected the empire's capacity for religious tolerance and the ability to adapt to changing spiritual currents. 
The simultaneous presence of both Hindu and Buddhist elements in the religious landscape exemplifies the unique religious syncretism that characterized the Khmer Empire. Rituals and religious practices were pervasive in Khmer society, shaping the daily lives of its inhabitants. Elaborate ceremonies conducted by Brahmin priests, including the sacred ritual of Deva Raja, reinforced the connection between the ruler and the divine. The construction of temples and the dedication of religious monuments were considered acts of spiritual merit, contributing to an individual's karma. Rituals and religious practices were pervasive in Khmer society, shaping the daily lives of its inhabitants. Elaborate ceremonies conducted by Brahmin priests, including the sacred ritual of Deva Raja, reinforced the connection between the ruler and the divine. The construction of temples and the dedication of religious monuments were considered acts of spiritual merit, contributing to an individual's karma. Devotional practices, including pilgrimages to sacred sites and the creation of personal shrines, were common among the Khmer people. The Aspara dance, a traditional dance form featuring celestial maidens, had religious undertones and was performed as an offering to the gods. The political structure of the Khmer Empire was characterized by a centralized monarchy, with the king at the apex of power. The king, often referred to as the God King due to the association with Hindu deities, held both political and religious authority. The God King concept was manifested through the Deva Raja ceremony, emphasizing the divine right of the ruler to govern. Beneath the king, a complex bureaucracy managed the administration of the empire. This bureaucracy included high-ranking officials, nobles, and military commanders who played crucial roles in governance. The administrative apparatus was organized into various ministries, overseeing functions such as taxation, justice, and public works. Provincial and local governance was facilitated through appointed officials who reported to the central administration. Administrative centers, often located near key temples and cities, served as hubs for governance and communication. The administrative policies of the Khmer Empire were geared towards maintaining centralized control and ensuring the smooth functioning of the state. The empire's vast irrigation systems, exemplified by the West Beret and East Beret reservoirs, were not only feats of engineering but also integral to agricultural policies. These irrigation projects facilitated rice cultivation on a large scale contributing to economic prosperity and food security. The administrative policies of the Khmer Empire were geared towards maintaining centralized control and ensuring the smooth functioning of the state. The empire's vast irrigation systems, exemplified by the West Beret and East Beret reservoirs, were not only feats of engineering but also integral to agricultural policies. These irrigation projects facilitated rice cultivation on a large scale, contributing to economic prosperity and food security. Public works projects were a hallmark of Khmer administrative policies. The construction of temples, roads, and water infrastructure not only served religious and practical purposes but also acted as a means of providing employment and reinforcing the king's authority. Diplomacy played a crucial role in the Khmer Empire's external relations. The empire maintained intricate diplomatic ties with neighboring states, engaging in trade, alliances, and occasional conflicts. Trade routes crisscrossed the region, connecting the Khmer Empire with other Southeast Asian states, as well as with the maritime powers of India and China. The empire's strategic location facilitated economic exchanges, with goods such as spices, precious metals, and textiles flowing through its territories. Diplomatic alliances were pursued for mutual benefit and security. Interactions with Champa, a neighboring kingdom, were marked by both conflict and alliances. The Khmer Empire engaged in occasional military campaigns to expand its territory or protect its interests, but it also sought diplomatic solutions to ensure stability in the region. Cultural exchanges also occurred through diplomatic channels. The Khmer Empire absorbed influences from Indian, Chinese, and other Southeast Asian cultures, contributing to its rich and diverse cultural tapestry. 
The diplomatic finesse of the Khmer rulers allowed the empire to maintain a balance between expansion and coexistence with neighboring states. While military might was not neglected, diplomacy played a pivotal role in safeguarding the empire's interests and contributing to its standing as a regional powerhouse. The decline of the Khmer Empire was a complex process influenced by a combination of internal and external factors. One major factor was environmental stress, particularly the strain on the intricate irrigation systems. As the population grew, the demands on water resources increased, leading to challenges in maintaining the extensive hydraulic infrastructure. Environmental degradation and the failure of irrigation systems contributed to a decline in agricultural productivity, impacting the empire's economic foundation. The decline of the Khmer Empire was a complex process influenced by a combination of internal and external factors. One major factor was environmental stress, particularly the strain on the intricate irrigation systems. As the population grew, the demands on water resources increased leading to challenges in maintaining the extensive hydraulic infrastructure. Environmental degradation and the failure of irrigation systems contributed to a decline in agricultural productivity, impacting the empire's economic foundation. The Khmer Empire faced external threats from neighboring states, including the Ayutthaya Kingdom to the west and the Champa Kingdom to the east. These external pressures strained the empire's military resources and diverted attention from internal issues. The Siamese, Thai, Kingdom of Ayutthaya, in particular, emerged as a formidable adversary. Military conflicts with Ayutthaya led to territorial losses, including the important Angkor region. These external invasions eroded the empire's territorial integrity and weakened its geopolitical standing. The Bayan and Angkor Thom were abandoned as the capital during this period, reflecting the strategic challenges faced by the Khmer rulers in maintaining control over their vast territories. Internal conflicts and economic challenges further contributed to the Khmer Empire's decline. Economic strains resulting from environmental factors affected the empire's ability to sustain large urban centers and support the extensive bureaucracy. The decline in agricultural productivity, combined with increased competition for dwindling resources, led to economic hardships. Internal conflicts among the ruling elite, as well as rebellions from provincial governors and local leaders, added to the empire's instability. The erosion of centralized authority weakened the administrative machinery, making it difficult to address the myriad challenges facing the empire. The collapse of the vast water management systems, such as the collapse of the Jayatataka Beret, symbolized the empire's struggle to maintain its agricultural foundation. Economic decline, coupled with internal strife, created a self-reinforcing cycle that accelerated the Khmer Empire's descent. The Khmer Empire's cultural and architectural legacy is one of its most enduring contributions to world history. The monumental temples and cities, with Angkor as their centerpiece, stand as iconic symbols of human achievement and artistic brilliance. Angkor Wat, with its intricate carvings and symbolic architecture, continues to captivate the imagination of people worldwide. The legacy also extends to other architectural wonders such as Bayan, Ta Prom, and Bante Sre, each showcasing the unique blend of Hindu and Buddhist influences. The empire's dedication to the arts and literature, evident in the bas-reliefs, sculptures, and inscriptions, has left an indelible mark on the cultural heritage of Cambodia and Southeast Asia. The Khmer Empire's influence transcended its territorial boundaries, shaping the broader Southeast Asian civilization. Its cultural, religious, and political legacy permeated neighboring regions, influencing the art, architecture, and societal structures of surrounding kingdoms. The syncretic approach to religion, evident in the integration of Hinduism and Buddhism, became a hallmark of Southeast Asian cultural identity. The empire's impact on language and writing is also notable. The Khmer script, derived from Indian scripts, remains in use today in Cambodia, contributing to the continuity of linguistic traditions. The architectural and engineering achievements of the Khmer Empire set a precedent for future civilizations in the region, inspiring subsequent dynasties to emulate and build upon its legacy. 
the intricate urban planning, reservoir systems, and grand temple complexes established a template for monumental construction that continued to influence Southeast Asian architecture. The Khmer Empire's historical relevance extends beyond its classical era. Its rise and fall serve as a case study in the complex interplay of environmental factors, political dynamics, and external pressures. Scholars and historians continue to analyze the empire's legacy to gain insights into the challenges faced by complex civilizations throughout history. In a modern context, the Khmer Empire's legacy is a source of national pride for Cambodia. Angkor Wat, designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, attracts millions of visitors annually and stands as a symbol of Cambodia's rich cultural heritage. The preservation and restoration efforts undertaken at Angkor demonstrate the ongoing commitment to safeguarding this historical treasure for future generations. As we conclude our journey through the annals of the Khmer Empire, it is evident that this civilization continues to spark curiosity, inspiration, and scholarly inquiry. Future research endeavors could delve deeper into specific aspects such as the social dynamics of Khmer society, the intricacies of its trade networks, or the impact of the empire's decline on regional geopolitics. In a world where historical knowledge is crucial for shaping our present and future, the Khmer Empire stands as a beacon, beckoning researchers, historians, and enthusiasts to unravel more layers of its intricate narrative. The saga of the Khmer Empire is not just a chapter in history. It is a living testament to the enduring spirit of human creativity, resilience, and the pursuit of greatness.